Okay, guys. Just sitting here uh, doing a, a corn whiskey run. Still in the background heating up. Um, I'll just cobble this together to fit, fit everything the best I can uh, with what I've got. Uh, just a little Lego bits and pieces I built. There's uh, my cop column on the back there, line arm coming down into the um, uh, thumper there. And then that comes down with the flake stand. I've had to uh, abandon my uh, large Gatling condenser in here at the moment. Um, so what I've, what I've jury rigged, because uh, it's semi off grid, there's water's a premium up here. Um, there's a flake stand, a mild flake stand with the chiller below it. That's an old um, bar beer chiller, uh, kind of a heat exchanger jobby that I, I got very cheaply. Um, you can see in there. Oops. So basically, what we've got in there is a uh, refrigeration copper coil uh, runs around the outside, and then there's a um, coil in, in the middle here. Get my finger in here. And down here, that um, acts like a counterflow work chiller, and you can put a liquid in there and, and run it through. Uh, has a, a centrifugal pump in the middle that um, pumps liquid out, um, which I've got this outflow right next to the wiggly, right next to the uh, camera here. That comes out off the chiller there. Up, comes in through the top here. I've got a wee, a wee gate valve on the back here because um, if I don't turn that off when I stop running the, the system, it will start siphoning this uh, whole flake stand out and it will just drain it because the feed for the water comes in through here right down to the bottom you can probably just see that, that little elbow at the bottom coming out that's where it gets the water the cold water gets pumped into the, the bottom of the flake stand it goes around like a whirlpool um, and then it gets taken out at the top here uh, so that um, I'm taking out the hot water, ideally the hot water flows to the top, it's taking it, the, the liquid out from the top, but um, the flake scan stand can never actually drain itself fully. There's always liquid in there unless I take it away and drain it. Um, so if anything goes wrong during the, the run, um, the coil is always covered with water up to this level. Uh, and when, it, when the water comes out through here, it just comes out through this large port at the back and straight back down into the chiller. So that's, that's where we're at with that, that, that cooling system at the moment, and it's working fine. That flake stand um, originally was, was really good at knocking down stuff, uh, knocking down um, vapour, uh, and combined with the cheap ass chiller that I, I, I managed to score for, for very little. Um, that's, that's quite a neat little combo. We've got the thump you can see there. Um, and you can hear it. Just the vapour from the still just starting to trickle um, thump through into that into that thumper, which is why it's called a thumper. Or a doubler, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I've got another one that I can put next to it um, for when I'm doing rum runs and, and do a, a sort of a Barbados style uh, rum still for that uh, but this is where I'm at with the corn whiskey at the moment and what I'm doing for my corn oh, Just suffering a case of uh, Distillus Interruptus uh, I've just been informed I'm, I'm going out in a couple of hours suddenly so this is all uh, come, to a, come to a halt for a second or for a while, I'll probably come back uh, tonight and just run this, the whole thing out tonight um, I've turned, turned my control box off over here, um, shut everything down, and uh, I'll show you, I think I mentioned it in other videos before, I've just cracked this connection, which comes from the column there. Realistically, I should just have a, I could just have a smaller head for this thumper run uh, coming out of here into, into here, but like I said, I just cobbled it together out of, out of what I had sitting on there. Um, so yeah, I've cracked this, uh, allows the, the vapour to escape, oh it smells so good too, it's only just starting to, just starting to come across, uh, and that will stop any vacuum forming in here, I mean the kit, 
stills fills up right up there. There's very little headroom. It's uh, corn whiskey wa um, whiskey mash, but it's with the solids taken out, so it's just just the uh, the liquid in there. Um, there's very little headspace, but I don't want it cooling down and creating a vacuum and coming home to find either the thumper or the uh, the still itself has gone and, and imploded on itself. That would uh, that would not make my day. Uh, <coughs> What I was worried about was this, um, the, the full sort of height column there and um, the line arm <coughs> was that I might get a bit of uh, condensation in there, which um, condensing going on inside there, which I don't want to have happen. Basically, I just want the vapour to come straight across and, and into the thumper. Um, so I'll have a wee think about that. Um, maybe I just I rig something else when I come back and it's cooled down. We'll see, we'll see. So, uh, round two, um, second day. Uh, I got called away to a, um, a 21st last night uh, by the boss. <laughs> um, came back and uh, this morning uh, re rigged the thing. Um, so, I, I got rid of the, the tall uh, column and, and the, the line arm on there. Just had that. Uh, gooseneck coming out the top now. I've got my um, reflux condenser in here, um, just as, a, as an extension to, to get up the uh, the gooseneck up here, up above the top of the uh, the first thumper there. And um, basically, the, the vapor's coming out of here into this thumper. Get the vapor comes out at the bottom. The thumpers are about half full. Uh, it comes vapor builds up in here, comes out the top down the tube into this thumper and again this guy's about yay full of liquid vapour pressure builds up in here again um, and you get a snap of distillation and then the vapour comes out of here into the into the um, flake stand uh, out the bottom of here and once I've um, starting to take product and I've taken the four shots off and uh, I'm happy with what's coming out and I start collecting product I'll, I'll put my parrot sitting here on the end and, and the alchemeter and all that sort of stuff, but just for taking the four shots, just let it run out the end there. So that's that's the rig at the moment. I haven't actually run it with the two thumpers like that. I had to whack together the the, the arm across here and this little arm out of here, and uh, that was a really really stern reminder of why the hell I don't bother silver soldering uh, stainless ferrules to. Um, Copper, fit, uh, copper tube anymore. Oh my god, it's like masturbating with a cheese grater. Uh, I ended up um, giving up in frustration. I can't believe I used to do that all the time. And um, firing up the uh, firing up the tiggy over here and just uh, knocked out the joints with silicon bronze. So much easier. So it's, these things are just starting to fire up. Uh, I think the, the I've got the um, I've got the um, probe in the head of the, the gooseneck there and uh, at the moment we're at 25 degrees in the in the head of the head of the air. That's the it started off at about uh, 15 um, a while ago so I'm just sitting here waiting for it to, to do its thing I um, once I run the still I, I don't walk away I stay for the whole process it's just not safe um, but you can hear and if you can hear in the through the camera here, the uh, thumpers are starting to do their thing, and they stop as soon as I mention it. There we go. Yeah, this one's going to start going nuts first, and then this one will carry on. What generally happens is the uh, still gets up to temperature, it starts producing a lot of vapour, and, and starts uh, running at um, product temperature, and then uh, this guy here will suddenly. The, the liquid will come up to temperature, this guy will just suddenly spike and uh, I'm assuming it will run the same as in tandem as they do individually, then this guy's liquid temperature will, uh, will come up to, to the right temperature and then the temperature in the header here will spike and then I'll start seeing product. But uh, I'll come back in a bit when something's happening. <laughs> Thank you. 
monkey off the floor. Booze, booze, the firemen cried as they came knocking at the door. No blessing until it's all mopped up. Somebody shouted, Mac and Fire. And we all got blue, black, paralytic. So we're back here, and uh, it's all shaking along fine. The uh, first thumper we've got is up to about uh, 87, and that's holding there. The cool thing about thumpers is they kind of act as governors for themselves. So um, there's, there's plenty of vapor pressure pissing out of the uh, still in the background, through into the first thumper, up to about 87 degrees, and it's holding it there for, for the last, I don't know, hour or so. Oh, uh, and it's been the gas vapour has been coming across into the uh, second thumper and the temperature there is rising up and they tend to get to a certain point and then they'll spike and uh, this one's now up to uh, 50 degrees centigrade um, so the gas is going to slowly start coming across here and I will figure we'll be taking uh, shots out of here soon I'll take a couple of litres, it's excessive, but I'll take a couple of litres uh, based on what we've got in the still kettle and, and, and two thumpers here. Uh, I think I'm monitoring at the moment is the water temperature in the top of the flake stand, which hasn't moved that much at all, uh, but once the um, second thumper gets up to temp and it's, it's getting hot to the touch there now, I'll watch the temperature there and when it starts climbing I'll just fire up the, the chiller down the bottom there and uh, cool the flake stand for the rest of the run we're at uh, on 65 there in the, the second thumper and we've just started taking just started taking some poor shots off there just started dribbling out so I'll um, take a couple of jars of that be, be uh, close to 2 litres it's excessive for what I uh, what I need to take but um, I like to take uh, all the four shots I can and make sure I've uh, way into the heads before I start taking any product at all. I'm just taking off a uh, few tail end jars, uh, down to about 40% by volume. Uh, I'll run those out a little bit, maybe take another few more and then uh, call it quits. They'll just be uh, fanes for a, a fanes run at some stage or throwing into the, um, the last thumper at some point. Here's the dodgy bit, um, just got these. Uh, elements back to 40% power just so it's continuing to put something through the, uh, the still here what I've got to do is break the seals for the um, steam to come out and to just equalise the pressure otherwise I could potentially get a vacuum and um, implode one of the, the uh, thumpers or, or the still uh, so what I do here is break this, this knuckle here and that will um, allow this thumper to um, gas out and, and uh, neutralise the pressure in here or the, the vacuum, potential vacuum and I'll um, break this knuckle here and that will um, depressurise or remove any vacuum, potential vacuum back into the still there so I'll do this guy first um, and it's dodgy as hell because it goes off with a hiss and a roar I'm wearing a um, a mask, I've got welding welding glove here, I'm wearing a, a, a mask. Just give that a 
taken to being here. It wasn't as dramatic as it has been in the past. Okay. That'll just, like I say, alleviate all the pressure back into the um, into the still and remove the potential for a vacuum to form. Because I'm not going to mess around here tonight. I'm just going to go home and go to go to sleep. I'm knackered. It's been a long a long one. Well, that's doing that. So um, I'm just shut down shut down the um, elements there. to go. And then what we got out of it uh, was, um, well this, I took two jars of shots, four shots, uh, started taking heads, but as you can see, some idiot, for the first time, ran the still too damn hard at the beginning and smeared all this colour through, uh, right through from the still into the, into the thumpers. Uh, so I basically gave up. Uh, collecting jars or heads or whatever at that stage and just grabbed everything in this big um, five to six gallon uh, jug she's quite a quite a big sucker uh, and then just these with these with tails taken off the back end um, that was started at 75 and finished at 50 but it mainly went 60 uh, 75 to about 65. Uh, 60 uh, and the, the, the last little bit in here was um, it, it started dropping quite dramatically you can see here it's dropping pretty much 50, 45, 40, 35 that's within a, within a, um, a percent or so um, it, starts, it started tapering off quite dramatically then. it's almost like not quite a reflux run where, where you, um, you take off quite a high ABV and then it drops dramatically at the very end. Not quite like that, but more dramatic fall off than with a pot still, which is just a gradual, gradual fall off over the whole run. So yeah, this that sucker there. You can see the colour through there. I, I, just by the time I realised that I'd done, done that, I um, couldn't rectify it. But that's all taken off now. Um, I can just throw it back into another run. The beauty of distilling and um, put it through a second time, clean it all up which is um, what I'll do another day. So I'm going to go home now and get some sleep. Um, this stuff, you can see it's got that, that colour tint. It should have come through perfectly clear like this guy here. That was a different run. Yeah, I'm going to go home and get some sleep and uh, catch you guys later.